Okay, this is going to be a concluding video demonstrating the Magnavox 8-track, which come from a console stereo and has now been turned into component form. The only issue I have with it now is I believe I need a belt for it, because if I insert the tape too fast and don't give the motor a chance to speed up, the motor slips and the tape sounds terrible. But if you insert the tape and give the thing a second before engaging, it plays fine. So here it is. And after the demonstration, I'll explain the cabinet. I'm going to play it through Grandma's console stereo. This is now the power switch. It's four sets of contacts in parallel and kills all power to the A-track. Although there's also a switch built in to the tape slot which turns it off. Give it a second to speed up. Tell myself I'm wrong, I'm wrong, so wrong. Why can't I stand up and tell myself I'm strong? Because I saw her today, she was so got to be replaced in this. I put the tape in too quickly. Hold the tape out a second. Plays fine. Oh, Lydia, what will you leave us this time? You're only dancing on the surf for a short while. Oh, no. Don't say
this one needs a new sponge. So there it is. So what I've done is I built a cabinet for this to uh, turn it in a component 8-track. What I used for the wood is this is actually one of those Napvok shelves that you can get the home center's pre-finished board three feet long by eight inches wide. It has a veneer edging on it and what I did is I cut the length of it and then I took an iron and heated up the veneer and then was able to reattach the veneer to this edge giving it a factory look. I wanted the look of the fake wood because that would have been the proper look for this time period. Fake wood on particle board. Now neither the 8-track player nor the faceplate is level. The construction of the inside of this thing required it to be at an angle and what I did is basically set it down on the table and then used a uh, bevel square, determine the angle that I could make it, and then cut the box to that angle. And then, of course, I took the iron and I reapplied the veneer edge to this front. A little tiny bit of it actually shows. So it has a finished edge of veneer taken off of the original shelf all the way around. Now on the back, first off on the underside it's got a thin piece of wood because the mechanism actually comes right down to there. It basically sat flat. There's absolutely no extra space in this. I tried to make it as small as possible so it would be reasonable because it's kind of Rube Goldberg. The back panel is a piece of masonite. I've cut the RCAs off the cords and soldered them to this connection. It's taken from a junked record changer. Got my line cord. And I drilled it out with a hole saw and I'm going to put computer fan speak computer fan uh, grill on there, which is the only thing that's going to be a little bit on the out of place side, but it was a real easy way to do it and if I come across an old TV that I junk, in the future I'll make another back for it that'll have all the little holes. And yes, the belt's slipping. The motor is so strong that it starts up so fast that if you insert the tape quick enough, it'll slip. But yeah, it's got your particle board, pre-finished piece of shelving, worked beautiful to make the case out of. Very simple, just nailed together with a nail gun, holes filled with hole filler and stain to match. I don't know if you can see them. And there it is. Magnavox. 8-track stereo player converted to component form.